Hey there, nerdpreneurs. Welcome back to Market Like a Nerd. And get ready to geek out with me because today I'm joined by international business coach, Carolyn Saldo. Whoop, whoop. Hey, Carolyn. Welcome to Nerdpreneur Nation. Hi, Amanda. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, we're stoked to have you. Now, for everyone who's listening, today we're going to be talking about how to go from daydreaming to living your dream, just like Carolyn has. So first, let me tell you a little bit more about Carolyn, and then we'll dive into her tips. So Carolyn Saldo is an international business coach with an MBA in marketing. She's the founder of multiple premier business programs, including Brand Your Passions, From Passion to Profit, and and the powerhouse coach. Carolyn specializes in helping passion-driven women bring their skills to the world and launch thriving online coaching businesses with international reach. She works with new and experienced coaches across the globe, both online and in live luxury retreats. She hosts breakthrough masterminds in exclusive locations like Bali, London, Miami, and more. That sounds like fun. By applying real life experience to coaching, Carolyn helps transform the lives of passionate women who desire to bring their skills to the world, make an impact, follow their purpose, and create free and abundant lives. To learn more, go to carolynsaldo.com. <laughs> now that's the <laughs> overview of her story and biography, guys. But I want you to get to know the real Carolyn. So before we dive into the meat of today's episode, let's have some fun. You ready, Carolyn? I am. Thank you for this fun <laughs> intro. So of fun. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quick. Bali or Miami? Bali. London or Paris? London. Mm. Well, so let's test your knowledge of the local London jargon then, shall we? <laughs> Say you're doing a destination retreat in London and someone says they're over their arse over elbow for your branding. Do you know what that means? Translate it for us. Uh, they probably love our branding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was looking up local London jargon and I was like, that is so bizarre. <laughs> arse over elbow. <laughs> Never heard that before. <laughs> Now, I know you used to own a nanny matchmaker service, right? So quick, as fast as you can, spell supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I don't think I can spell Amanda. <laughs> hopefully, you got, hopefully everyone yeah. at least knows the reference. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, all right. Would you rather be one of those women who has gazillions of kids or would you rather never have a child at all? Gazillions of kids. Oh, really? You must yes. be a patient woman. <laughs> I, I love my boys and I love my family. So I'm, the more, the merrier. Oh, I love them too. But kids are just, they're, they're, they're evil. They are. <laughs> Sometimes, that, yeah, I, I would agree. Sometimes they can be, for sure. Little monsters. All right. Now, you lost 75 pounds on your own health journey, and then you went on to help others do the same in, like, this first little portion of your entrepreneurial journey. So uh, my last fun little question here for you is, would you rather get stuck under heavy weights while working at a gym or fall flat on your ass while running on a treadmill? <laughs> I would say get stuck under some heavy weights because I've been able to push through some pretty heavy stuff and I may be able to even push through and get myself out. Yeah. Yeah, that that's probably a that's probably a good bet. I I would probably go for falling on a treadmill just because I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> like super <laughs> embarrassing, true. but really funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was so much fun. Thank you. <laughs> now you. let's get down to business. So Carolyn, you told me that you were going to share with us about how to go from daydreaming to living your dream in your profit, profitable passion-based business. So let's dive in. Can you get a little OCD with us and break it down in your top three to five main steps or tips that you have for us today? Absolutely. So the first thing I have for you is a little check or a test that you can apply to what you're selling at the moment. 
And I think this applies to coaches, to course creators, to, you know, really many different service-based um, entrepreneurs out there. And something that I talk to my clients about when they come into my programs. So, and, and because we want to make sure the program sells, right? Mm -hmm. We want to make sure it's going to be hot when it flies off the shelves, when, you know, you launch this thing. So you want to be um, testing it in the beginning. So what we look at first and foremost is whether you are a true expert at what mm -hmm. you're offering, right? You can't be a copycat. You can't be just making this up on the fly. You can't be learning this from someone else and then reteaching it. It needs to be something you either have a certification in you have work experience, and that's where that's coming from, or you have actual life experience, right? So, for example, when I became a health coach back then, I didn't just make that up. I actually lost 75 pounds, and I, not just that, you know, I overcame some, uh, like, emotional eating stuff. I overcame some de postpartum mm -hmm. depression stuff. So I actually felt like, even though I've never had a client before, I have enough life experience mm -hmm. to make it work too. Oh God, I love that you were saying this by the way, because there's a lot of coaches out there who just, who tell their, their clients to just believe that they're an expert, but really you've got to be realistic about whether or not you actually are an expert or not. I mean, that's the way to grow the business in integrity. This is actually, this is one of the reasons why in, in one of my programs, it's a certification program where I certify coaches and I actually, I make them do the work um, and and they, they're required to see success with it before I'll teach them how to be a coach because they have to, in integrity, have gotten results with this stuff before they're able to go out and like white label resell it or, you know, go and do it with their clients because you have to like you, you can't just regurgitate information. That's what so many of so many coaches in the industry do is they're just regurgitating like you really have to know this stuff. You have to see success with it before you go out and teach it to other people. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's you without having that success, you will not feel good when you roll this out. You're going to feel like a fraud. You're not going to be able to go live or have a podcast like Amazing Amanda here or do anything because your soul will tell you that you're not meant to do it. Yeah. Right. So when I became a business coach, I became a business coach because I had grown a health coaching business and because I had grown a nanny company and because I had grown a manufacturing company with my husband. So different industries, different stuff, but I have a business background. I'm not just someone who one day woke up and said, oh, I want to be a business coach. I actually had some background. Yeah, right? Very important. Oh, my God. I love you so much. Keep going. <laughs> right. Let's do it. Number two, and this is just my first tip, so I have, I have more, but this is part of the first one. Okay? okay. So number two is there has to be a demand. Okay? And I, and I call, there are some people out there who almost, I call them healing with their eyes people. Mm-hmm. And, and what that means is that, you know, they're making up programs that are not, uh, you know, solving an urgent problem. Mm. It's And it's a lot of people who say, well, I want to help you be happier. I want to help you live a more fulfilled life. And there's not enough depth to it. So it's this, this airy fairy kind of thing that nobody really knows what they can get from it. No, it doesn't really solve a problem. People don't know what the outcome is and it doesn't sell. So there has to be demand. Yeah, you know, and, and this, this is reminding me of a, of a shift I made once in my business that was specifically for this, this reason because I noticed that, like, I thought I was speaking to a specific um, desire or to a specific pain. And as soon as I shifted the messaging, it was like the floodgates open. So what it was is when I first opened my coaching business, I was speaking to like what every other business and marketing coach speaks to, like wanting to make six figures. Like you think that that's a specific desired outcome, but real people don't actually want to make six figures. What they want is they want consistent cash flow. They want to be able to pay themselves. And so since I started talking about consistent cash flow and being able to pay yourself with the new business owner group, um, it's been so easy to sell, like so, so easy. <laughs> Yeah, that's the messaging and, and that's, you know, and, and Amanda is addressing a very specific desire and a problem too. People don't have cash flow, they, they, you know, money isn't coming into the business. So figure something out that is very urgent for people. You know, what is ur urgent in their lives? What's really bothering them? And, and in any niche, you know, there's health problems, there's money problems, there's spiritual problems, love, I mean, all of it, right? Um, and go for that. Don't make up this, you know, dream life program that nobody really knows what to do with. 
Next thing, it needs to be profitable. So mm -hmm. the market that you enter needs to have the money to, you know, to, to pay you. So, you know, you have a choice between working with stay at home moms versus women that have a job. Um, you know, there's people that are very, you know, charitable. They come to us and they say, well, I want to work with nonprofits. I want to yeah. work with women that are on the streets, single moms. And it's very honorable and it's a great mission that you have, but it may not work for your business because these people can pay you. Yeah, it's not enough to work with a niche that you love. The niche has to be lucrative too. Absolutely. And then the last piece is that you have to really love it because when you go out there, when you hear Amanda on her podcast, and this is really the first time I, I, I experience you, but I feel passion. Yay. I feel <laughs> I feel light. And I hope people, I know people, you know, they feel this about me too when they see me speak. And it's not all about being perfect and prim and proper, but it's about this fire and this right. passion you have for what you do. Yeah, and, and, that, and it shows up. Like people can really tell. Because I remember in my last business when I was not super happy and like people keep saying it to me that I didn't seem happy. And I was like, it's because I'm not. <laughs> like they can tell. It oozes into everything you do in the business. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to love it just because you're good at finance. Like I'm really good at Facebook ads. I'm really good at finance because I was doing the financials for my husband for many years, but I don't really enjoy it. I do it because it's important, but I don't want to do it all day long. I'm so amazed I'm that go. anyone likes finance. Just saying <laughs> 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 that was the first thing I delegated. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And so many other things too. But um, yeah, so if you're right now, if you have a program that doesn't sell or you, you want to create a new program or an offering, use those four things to test whether what you have and what you want to do is really going to work for the world and for you as well. Oh my God. Love it. Okay. So test and make sure that it's a profitable idea. Number one. Yeah. All right. What's next? Number two is nowadays you need to be differentiating based on who you are as a person, especially as an online entrepreneur. Differentiating based on a system doesn't work anymore because a system can be copied. You don't yeah. have a trademark on it. You don't have a patent on it. Whatever system, it's important that you have a system so that you can get results, right? So whether it's a marketing system or how to get your cash flow up, but you have to be someone who stands out. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, again, Amanda is someone who stands out. She has a brand. She has a branded background. She's a very quirky, outgoing personality, and she has certain values, right? So... You can't just be someone who goes out there and, and creates a pretty brand and, and there's nothing nothing else behind yeah. it, right? There's so many coaches and, and, and online entrepreneurs entering the market. It's, I think, a billion-dollar industry now. Your, and we have to figure out who you are, right? Your brand is the reason why I invited you to the show because – you were showing up just so powerfully on online and on Facebook. Like I see your ads and they really, really stand out. And you just, you look like an influencer. You look like a leader. You look like you have your stuff together. And yeah. <laughs> and that was the exact reason why I was so attracted to you in, in, to begin with. It was your brand. It was the way that you showed up. Yeah. And, and, you know, what we teach in many ways, it's different and it works, but it also is, is not different. There's probably hundreds of other coaches out there teaching you how to run a Facebook ad, how to brand yourself in different ways. Right. So why people work with you or me has everything to do with who we are. Right. So the values for us, it's about authenticity and about supporting our clients. And my reputation is more important than anything else to me out there. And I'm transparent radically. We open up our my life and my, my business to my clients, right? And it's more about empowering women out there than anything else. So yeah. yes, we teach the business stuff, but at the end of the day, what I really do is transform a woman's life and who she even is. They come in and they're insecure and they're not sure, and this is going to work for me, and am I good enough? And when they're done, they're powerhouses. They're like, I am confident and I love it, but that it's a complete transformation. Yeah, I see. So I, you use the word empowering, and I think when I see a lot of your materials, that's one of the words that comes to mind is when I think uh, not just like business coach, but empowering business coach, I would think of you. I noticed when um, I, I was doing like video interviews with a lot of my clients, like nine times out of 10, they would use the word fun or quirky. You said quirky. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what they use for me. So yeah. we might have similar things that we teach, but our percept, like people's perceptions of us are just ever so slightly different because of the way that we show up and the values that we, um, uh, that we put forth in the marketplace. Absolutely. To give you an example, I had a business coach come to me last year and she had the pretty website. She had the, you know, make money in your business kind of message. And she's very skilled. She has the expertise. So nothing wrong with that. But her message wasn't selling. She wasn't getting the conversions. She wasn't booking calls. And she said, Carolyn, what's wrong with me? And I said, you don't stand out. You look like just like any other pretty brand out there. People don't know who you really are. Who's that woman behind that pretty brand? So what we did with her, we really dug in and it was clear very, very quickly that she was a very Christian based lady, oh. very Christ centered God, you know, and, and that was faith was very important to her. So what we did is we changed her message on her website. We changed the message in her Facebook ads. And now she goes, she's going out there and, and helping, you know, Christian women build a Christ centered faith driven business. Yeah, that and, I can already you can hear just in the description. It's yeah. that that's a much more laser focused standout brand and positioning. Yeah, right there. And then I have another client who joined us last month and she's very corporate. Um, I think her background is in accounting. So she likes her suits and she's got their short hair and she's very professional in her approach. So the women that probably come to her are corporate women, you right. know, women that go corporate to coach, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. we can build a brand and an aura and a, you know, and a, and a, and a positioning around that too. So um, I guess the message here is figure out what makes you unique. What kind of man or woman are you? How do you want to be seen? You know, the reputation you're building and that's how you differentiate. Beautiful. So number one, make sure that test to make sure it's a profitable idea. Number two, differentiate yourself in the marketplace by figuring out what makes you unique and positions you differently than every other coach in the marketplace or every, every, anyone else in your industry. I know not everyone's a coach. <laughs> What's That's next? It. You got it. So number three has to do with how you market. Okay, and, and I'm going to keep it a little high level first and then we'll go down in some more detail. So then when you look at your marketing strategy, which you should have a strategy, this is not an experimentation where you're throwing things around and you're hoping for the best. You need to have a plan that you know is going to work for your business. And that plan needs to be proactive. It needs to be predictable and it needs to be scalable. Okay, mm. so proactive means you actually need to do something for it. And maybe for many of you, this is like, duh, you know, common sense. But I still come across so many people who say, being good is enough. I can yeah. just sit back. People will come. They will somehow find me through Google or through whatever word of mouth. And that is not true. You need to take action. Even if you're someone who is spiritual and you believe that you can just, you know, be in high vibration and manifest your clients, that doesn't work either because inspired action is still necessary. So yeah. taking action is non-negotiable, right? When I say predictable, I mean that your marketing efforts need to be predictably generating cash flow, you know, to speak Amanda's language here. So <laughs> they need to be in your business. And, and I used to be in these shoes. Like a year and a half ago, I would not know how much money I was going to make. I would know. I would not know where is my next client going to come from. How many will I have? My accountant said, "Well, what's your projection for this year? How much you know money should we put aside for taxes?" I had no clue, mm. no idea. It was all over the place. So your marketing, the job of your marketing is to help you predict predict how much money you're going to make, essentially. That's the bottom line. So if it doesn't, it means that you're not strategic enough, you're not planning enough, and you're sort of like, you have all these balls in the air, and you're not really quite sure what works. Yeah, and that's a huge ch ch change and shift when you can actually predict into the future how much money you're going to be making Oh my God, so many doors open because so many things become easier. Like if you can predict how much money you're going to be making, like you said, you gave one example, you know how much to save for taxes. Um, yeah. Number two, you know how much you're probably going to be able to pay yourself. You know if you can like increase expenses here or hire someone there, you know, you can make decisions, educated decisions about your business and your life because of that. It's, you have so much yeah. more control over the business and your life. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and your life too, you're going on vacation, you're paying down your mortgage, you're paying down your debt, whatever. I mean, all of it, right? Um, and so the next piece is it has to be scalable, which means that you need some sort of automation. You cannot scale things if it's manual, if it's based on people, because eventually you only have so many hours in a day and you're going to run out of time, right? So there needs to be some sort of automation. And, you know, really what we're talking about is online advertising, mm -hmm. Google ads, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. I mean, they're all offering advertising. So as an online entrepreneur, if you're not already relying on advertising, you're leaving money on the table and you're making it very hard on yourself. Yeah, 100%. And then for the things that aren't automatable, what I recommend is making them like templatized, like systematized. So if they're manual, make them really easy to rinse and repeat. And if you can automate them, automate them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So any marketing that, that we're doing right now for the most part is automated. Yeah. We leverage it. A lot of stuff I do live, you know, I do my Facebook lives and I post once in a while, but that's when I have the time. And it, it's not, it doesn't happen that often. And it's because I love that connection that it gives me to people, you know, and it's fun for me. But when you have your, I have my ads running on different channels and it automates the lead generation for me. And that's what I love. So yeah, it's I see them all the time. They're brilliant. <laughs> and it's, it works for, you know, any niche. You can target people so precisely nowadays. We all know that. It's sort of like a no brainer for me. So it's proactive, it's predictable, it's scalable and, and it works. So those are my tips, consistent income, positioning, all that good stuff. I hope this was good. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. So much good stuff. And you know what I love about you, Carolyn, is you are so systematic in your approach to teaching. Um, that, that's a skill. That, that's such an important skill. And it really gives us a good kind of, um, what is that called? Like <laughs> glimpse into your coaching style. <laughs> I love it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. Of course. Now, for our nerdpreneurs who are listening, who want to get an A plus for effort and are going to take that extra step to look you up, uh, can you make it a little bit easier on them? Where can they find you online? What's the gift that you have for us today? All of that. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me on my website, of course. It's Carolyn Soldo, C-A-R-O-L-I-N-S-O-L-D-O.com. I'm on uh, Facebook, all the different social media channels. Very simple, just my name, Carolyn Saldo. And um, if you want to have a glimpse into my marketing that we just talked about as well, you can actually sign up for a workshop that we have. It's brand new. And um, it really comes down to the five core shifts that we teach our clients and that they use to build their coaching businesses to six or seven figures, right? And they do that with while being brand new. We work with brand new people, brand new coaches, and it doesn't matter whether nobody knows about you right now because that's where I started. We all started at that point, right, Some sometime uh, in the past. And so um, I boiled down my process and my systems based on what I've done, based on what our client's doing every single day, and that's what I teach in this workshop. So if you want to sign up, it's free. Um, you can check it out right now. It's at carolynsoldo.com slash passion. Oh, beautiful. Nice and easy. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. There you have it, Nerdpreneur Nation. Our business superhero has swooped in to save the day to register for <laughs> Carolyn's latest live workshop to discover the five shifts that you need to make in your business to go and skyrocket to success. Head on over to carolynsoldo.com forward slash passion. Thank you so much, Carolyn, for joining us. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for being here and listening. I hope you learned a lot. Can't wait to hear where these tips take you. And we'll catch you next time on Market Like a Nerd. Have a nerdtastic day, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>